Hi guys, welcome to another video. Uh, today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be fitting my T-motor anti-gravity motors to my Phantom 1.5. Uh, nothing particularly rocket science, uh, loads of people have done this, there are plenty of videos out there, I thought I'd do my own because frankly it's here, it's available, I don't think I've seen anyone do it to a 1.5 but there's no real difference between doing it to a 1.5 and there is to doing it to a, uh, a standard Phantom. So anyway, purpose for this, uh, basically I wanted to be able to run the uh, the Phantom 2 props. Um, I'm under the impression that they may actually be pretty efficient and certainly um, from experience at the moment my Phantom 1.5 which is running at about 1300 grams uh, it's getting me about probably about 15-16 minutes absolute maximum out of the Phantom 2 battery. Obviously I've got the option to run a standard LiPo because this is a 1.5 um, I haven't tried that yet I haven't found the right solution um, that's perfect for me um, that will be further down the line. However because I had the original Phantom I didn't have a 1.1 Point one, I had the original Phantom 1, um, what that meant is that all of my motors are uh, clockwise. So if I wanted to go the route of having the, uh, the Phantom 2 props, these chaps right here, the problem is I would need to buy two motors. Not a major issue, I'd have to buy some counterclockwise motors, I could keep the other two. Obviously, you know, £40 to do that, that was one option. Uh, the other option was to replace all four of them, thus leaving me with four DJI motors to play with on other devices and getting myself some better motors. Uh, from the point of view of the anti-gravity motors, I've only heard good things about them. Um, I don't think they're going to perform miracles. Uh, from my, my side of things, I've already had a bearing go on one of these before and that was a big pain in the backside to replace. I ended up actually destroying the motor by just trying to fix it. So I had to replace it anyway. Obviously the T-Motors, they've got the Japanese ESO bearings. They're a lot better from the point of view of last stability. Um, that's, that's the major difference. Obviously there are claims of 10% more efficiency, a little bit more pulling power, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure there probably are, but from my side of things, I just wanted to know that they're a little bit more durable. And I'm very happy with other T-Motors that I've had. So... I'll stop waffling now. Um, so basically all I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, I'm going to put the T-motor anti-gravities in here. I'll do a video showing you how I go about doing it. Fairly straightforward. I'll show you the soldering so you can see how that goes. These things come with excellent instructions specifically for the Phantom. Um, and the best part of that is that you don't have to fiddle around desoldering and resoldering to uh, find out if you've got the rotation right. If you follow the instructions, they'll be able to do it first time round. So it shouldn't take me too long at all. So I'll get cracking with that. Once I've done that, what I'm going to be able to do, I've already done a sort of test, hover test with these Grubner 9x5 um, props. So I already know how much time I can get out of that. What I'll do once I've done these motors, I will then charge the battery up and we'll have another video showing the difference in time between running the T motors and running the standard motors with the Grotner props. After that, obviously what I'll do, charge the battery up again, and then I'll stick the Phantom 2 blades on there and we'll see how they compare, see if there's any increase in time, efficiency, and we'll see how it all flies in the air. So that's the plan anyway. So I will probably do this in fast motion for you from this point on. All I'm going to do is undo the prop nuts. I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to do all of the uh, all of the various screws off the bottom of it. Open the top shell, take the top shell away, and then I'm going to be desoldering the uh, the motors. So uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so with the top shell off, now we're staring at one of the uh, motor arms. So this is the, uh, let me think about this, this is uh, M4 that I'm staring at at the moment. Um, it's the same for every single motor. So the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to take these wires off there. I left the motor actually mounted onto the motor mount at the moment just so I can do that and I can put a bit of pressure on there. So all I've got is my temperature control soldering iron. Got it set to a nice hot temperature, 450 degrees C. Uh, the reason I'm using a very high heat is because DJI use some very good solder for uh, for their ESCs, so you're going to need a decent temperature. So first and foremost, 
Let's work our way through these. Okay, now, simply just a case of undoing the motor from the bottom of it now, which I will do. Okay, so we have one DJI motor. Done. So, now all we've got to make sure is that because these these are the V2 anti-gravity motors, that's what they look like here, all very nice. You can tell which direction they go because you will see on the prop nut that comes on it, there is a direction. So clockwise and anti-clockwise, obviously what we're looking for. This one being M4, this one is the clockwise direction, so we know this is going to go in place. Now this is where the instructions are going to be very handy. Um, it's not difficult to find out which one does what by just trial and error, but the beauty of the instructions, as I hold them up here, is they actually tell us which motor wire goes to which connector as we stare at them, depending on the direction, which is nice and, nice and easy to follow. So, first things first, we want to mount this clockwise motor into place. Okay. So by the looks of it, they may have pre-tinned, yes, they pre-tinned the wires. Yeah, let me just get that in shot properly. So, we've got a decent amount of solder still left on, so I'm probably going to be able to get away with using the existing solder as well. If I need to, I'll always add some more, but we'll see how these go. So, following the instructions for a clockwise motor, we want the, let's see, this particular outermost goes to 1, so that's going to be 1. And we want three to be the nearest one. So that's going to be three. Okay. One, two, three. So I'm going to go with just popping these down in these holes to get them out of the way. So this is going to be in the first one, nearest one. Okay, so there we go, easy as that, just in case of soldering those up and as you can see there's a decent amount of cable on here, there's not silly lengths, it's exactly designed to be where it is, uh, it's not going to get in the way when you shut the shell, there's plenty of space to play with, be a little bit smart about how you do the soldering, um, I'm probably going to do on the other motors, I'll probably try and try and make it so the solder forces the cable to stay inside the shell so it doesn't snag when I open it but that's the fundamental of it so what I'll do now is I'll move on and I'll do the uh, the rest of them and uh, we'll see how they come out okay 
so that is all the soldering done um, now it's just a case of we've got to test them make sure everything's working in the right direction uh, a couple of ways you can do this um, you can plug it into the NASA assistant you can do the motor test or you can do it the good old-fashioned way uh, just put the lid back on um, and uh, fire it up so that's pretty much the route that I'm going to decide to go so let's get this all back in place get the GPS back on Get the orientation of the shell correct. Compass cable down here. Okay, you want to make sure that's popped down nicely because otherwise your motors are always going to foul on it anyway. And let's just plug the compass cable in. Don't necessarily have to do all of this, but I like to uh, make sure I don't confuse it too often. Okay, everything connected, uh, being that this is a 1.5, my uh, Phantom 2 battery is currently on charge at the moment, so I'm going to use a standard LiPo, which is always a pleasure. So let's fire it up. Okay, I am you all warmed up. I'm going to put my hand down on the shell. Again, just want to make sure that none of these are going to foul whilst doing the test. Everything's nice and free, and let's turn her on. So, what have we got? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And that's fine. So, all motors turning in the correct rotation. Perfect proof that the instructions that they give you are spot on. Okay, so that's all done. All of the uh, nuts and bolts are back in place. Shell's nice and down solid. Um, so yeah, so what I'm doing now is just do a quick trial fit of the DJI Phantom 2 props. I found immediately that the counterclockwise ones are pretty tight. The nice white powder coating, I think it is, on the T motor motors themselves, actually on the threads, um, that gets pretty tight. It actually gets ground off with some of these props, but you know, at the end of the day, the uh, the key is they're going to stay on. So anyway, so that's uh, that's the props done. So you can actually see them. Nothing particularly new there, anyway. Very flexible these props compared to the Grobners, but uh, when you look at the profile. It'll be very interesting to see how they perform. So, like I say, the uh, the next videos that you'll be seeing on my uh, on my YouTube channel will be first and foremost these motors with the Grobner props, not these particular props. That's going to test to see how the battery life is, stability, see how much it wanders, um, and then I'm going to put these on and we'll do the same test. It's all going to be done with a Phantom 2 battery. Uh, at some point in time I'll get a uh, proper LiPo that I can certainly use. Um, there's a few suggestions out there, it's just getting hold of one in the UK is not particularly easy. Um, yeah, once I've got that I'll do some more tests. So uh, so yeah, if you're interested in the whole Phantom 1.5 then please subscribe and uh, watch this space for further news. <laughs>